Hi there and welcome to this video. I realised the other day I've been posting on this channel for about six months now and it's been great to have so many of you along on the journey in looking at the benefits and some of the challenges around modern mirrorless cameras and in particular the Nikon Z series cameras. One of the questions that I get asked quite often is about how do I go about cleaning the sensor because for all the benefits of mirrorless cameras one of the slight downsides that I've found is that probably because of the size of the lens mount, the proximity of the sensor to that lens mount, i.e. it's closer to it, and also the fact that there is obviously no mirror in between the outside world and the sensor, it means that you get a lot more dirt, dust attaching itself to the sensor. And therefore, no matter what you do, even if you don't change the lenses that much, you have to clean the sensor more often. I managed to survive a couple of weeks before having to clean the sensor and the first time I changed lenses I found there was some dust on the sensor. So it's something that I think is part of living with a mirrorless camera and lens system. And to put it into context, with my D850 I probably had to clean the sensor once in the um, time I had it which was just over a year. With the D800 I probably had to clean it no more than two or three times in three years. Yet with my Z series cameras I'm probably having to clean the sensors once every two weeks or, month, or once a month depending on how often I'm using them. With my D800 and D850, I found the best way of cleaning the sensor was using one of these, which is an eye lead um, gel sensor cleaning kit. Um, it wasn't cheap, but it came recommended um, and it comes in a nice carrying case. Um, but what it is, is a very sticky gel um, pad on the end of a stick. And what you do is you open the camera up with the D850 you had to have the power on make sure you had a full battery you um, activate the mirror to flip up and then you, you go across the sensor gradually working your way across picking up any dirt and um, dust that's on the sensor now this really isn't for the faint-hearted the first time I used it because it's a sticky pad it actually sticks to the sensor and you feel like you're wrenching the sensor out of the camera to get it off. Um, so it's quite disconcerting, but with practice you realize that you could put the, sense, the um, sticky gel pad down and you can roll it up and you gradually work across the sensor. It's, it usually took me a couple of goes across the sensor to make sure I'd got rid of everything. Um, and it got rid of dust and also little specks of grease or oil that had perhaps got onto the, the sensor. So it was a very effective way of cleaning the sensor. Because I was only cleaning the sensor probably once a year, my heart could stand the, uh, the stress of really working on the sensor and feeling like you were pulling it out of the camera. However, with mirrorless cameras and having to clean at a much more regular interval, um, and that combined with the fact that whilst in the D850 the sensor was relatively fixed, in the Z series and most mirrorless cameras we've got in-body image stabilisation, which for those of you who aren't aware actually means the sensor is almost floating um, in there on small motors that move it to counteract um, any um, movement um, and therefore create that image stabilisation. So you probably don't want to be using one of these I lead sticky gel sensors on um, a mirrorless camera. You can do because if you've got the power off then the sensor is locked down but I would say for me it's just an extra risk. We've got to remember that when we're working with sensors they are very sensitive uh, components um, and therefore we want to be gentle with them. We want to really just be quite considerate, take some time, make sure you've set yourself some time to clean the sensor rather than doing it in a rush or perhaps in the field. Um, so what I've developed is, and what I use now, is really a multi-step approach to keeping the sensor clean. And I'm finding it works quite well. Uh, my heart is much better for it. Um, and what I'm going to do today is really take you through that process that I use or the steps that I use of different levels of cleaning to keep the sensor in optimal condition. 
Before we dive into the cleaning techniques, let's just consider the challenge we're dealing with. When you get a little bit of dust or dirt on your lens, it's easy to clean and quite often if there's a small piece of dust, a small hair or something on the lens, it doesn't actually show up on the image. Now, if any amount of dust or hairs or dirt or anything gets onto the sensor, then it's obviously much closer to the um, capture points of the light on the sensor, the individual pixels. And therefore it can either block the light getting to the pixels or distort that light going to the pixels. So it's more likely to show up on the image. And on this image on the screen, you can see there are a couple of spots um, that have appeared there. One looks like a small hair and one is a, a speck of dust probably. Interestingly, this was a um, shot I took when we were down at the coast recently. And this is a fairly um, sharp cliff and a group of um, young people turned up. And of course, a lot of them, as you can see, were trying to get Instagram shots at the edge of the cliff. And the, you know, the, the um, people doing their Instagram selfies there are probably no more than a couple of feet from the edge of this sheer cliff, which is quite unstable. And the Coast Guard were telling them to back off um, from the edge of the cliff, but they insisted on um, continuing to get their selfie. But moving on from that, you can see there are these couple of points of uh, dust and dirt on the sensor. Now it's not the end of the world and I carried on shooting. I didn't choose to clean the um, sensor at this point. I was on top of a cliff, uh, lots of dust, lots of dirt and actually taking the lens off would have caused more dirt and dust to get in than I'd probably have cleaned out. My first level of um, cleaning is actually just living with it and cleaning it in post-production. And that's probably um, the approach I'll take in most situations in the field. Sometimes though, the speck of dust is, or, or dirt that's in the, on the sensor is right in the center or is interfering with the image I'm taking and you've got no option but to try and do something about it. Or it could be that you know you're at the beginning of a shoot in, um, in the field and you're gonna be shooting hundreds of images and you don't really want to go through and have to try and clean them all up in post-production. So the second step that I take is using the in-camera sensor cleaning um, capabilities. Now, if you go into the setup menu and you scroll down to the second page, near the bottom is an option called clean image sensor. And if you go into there, um, and I'll cover the detail settings in a follow-up um, two-minute tip video. But if you go into the, the one that I use in the field is the first option, which is clean now. And if you stand your camera upright on the base of the camera, is the recommendation from Nikon, and then press that now option, it vibrates the sensor um, very quickly with the hope of dislodging any dust that will then drop down into the camera. And I found this really quite useful in the field. It works the majority of times. Sometimes I've had to do it a second time, um, but that clears it. Be warned, if you do it more than a few times, the camera may then gray out that option for a period of time to avoid damaging the components of the um, camera. Um, but it's a really good way of just quickly, in the field, cleaning that sensor. Now, it doesn't work all the time. Maybe you've got a speck of dust that has actually attached itself to the sensor quite robustly and you can't get it off by vibrating the sensor. Then the next step I take is probably one that I wouldn't do in the field unless I really had to because you have to turn the camera off and for all of these following um, cases and approaches and techniques, you have to have the camera in the off setting. Now that's different from the previous DSLRs where you had to have them turned on because obviously you needed power to flip the mirror up. In a um, mirrorless camera, it's the opposite. You've got to have it set to off. And the reason this is important is that in the Nikon cameras, this then locks the sensor down. So the next technique I tend to use is really to open up the camera um, sensor and use one of these blowers. Now I've got a, a selection, this is the um, Giotos cue ball or you can get the air rocket from there, very good. And I just tend to give the sensor a quick blow to try and get any visible dust off there. I've got a speck off um, of this, my Z7. And that should be able to dislodge anything that is loosely attached to the sensor. If you still see that there are some um, dirt and dust marks on the 
sensor on the images that you're shooting, then it's going to be a slightly more involved, um, but not too worrying approach that you're going to need. And what you might want for one of, for this step is um, a, an eye loop. This is a watchmaker's one, one from Omega. Um, and you can then use that to look at the sensor and just understand whereabouts on the sensor are these little spots that are appearing on your image coming from and what's the nature of them. Is it a speck of grease or is it a piece of dust or is it a hair? If it's something that's pretty loosely attached, then the next step I use is using what I've bought is one of these full frame sensor cleaning kits. And what this, this one here includes, and the links are below, um, you can get them from Amazon and various places. But this one is um, a combination of 12 of these little swabs. They come in hermetically sealed packs and you tear off the top. This is one I've already used and pull out the swab. And these can be used either dry or wet. So for my next step, I tend to use these dry. And these are full frame ones because obviously the Z6 and Z7 are full frame. You can buy them for other sensor sizes. So they are tailored to the sensor size. And what I do is I tend to have the camera on a, a working surface that's very stable. I have good light. I've worked out where the dust is. And you just lay this at one end of the sensor and gently pull it across and then flip it over and pull it back the other way. And what you'll find is in most cases, and this is what I'm finding, is in most cases with my Z6 and Z7, that will clean um, the dirt and the dust off of the sensor. So just take your time, create a nice um, environment where you're not under pressure from anything or anyone, and just take it steadily, very gently, just draw it across the sensor and you'll find that you won't be getting into the palpitations of using the eye lead type approach of um, that sticks to the sensor. So it's, it's something you have to get used to. It's not that worrying um, and is relatively straightforward. If you still don't get the dirt and dust off, and there are occasions when perhaps a little bit of grease has got onto the sensor, probably less so in a mirrorless camera because in a DSLR where you've got the mirror mechanism moving, flicking around at high speed, there is a tendency sometimes, and Nikon have had problems in the past with some of their cameras of, of specks of grease moving off of that mechanism and onto the sensor. For something like that, you're not gonna get it off with dry techniques or blowers, um, or vibrating the, the sensor. In fact, if you use a dry, um, a dry approach, you're probably gonna smear it across the sensor. And what you also get in this set is a um, small bottle of wet cl uh, sensor cleaning solution. And all you have to do is take one of these swabs um, and open the top and just put a very small um, drop of this sensor cleaning liquid on the um, swab and then use the same approach of just gradually and gently drawing it across the sensor. You may then want to take another swab out and use it as a dry swab across the sensor just to make sure any remaining residual sensor cleaning solution uh, doesn't create any marks on the sensor. And it really is that simple. Um, as I say, moving away from the eye lead gel type sensor cleaning has uh, helped my heart no end. It means that I'm quite happy and comfortable cleaning my sensors on a more regular basis. And in fact, I probably do it more proactively now because I've realized that actually it's nothing to worry about. It's fairly simple. It's fairly straightforward. And I can just keep the sensor in a tip-top condition. Now it's worth noting that in the Nikon Z series manuals, um, Nikons um, do make a warning that you can clean the sensor, but their recommendation, not unsurprisingly, is to take it to a Nikon approved um, service center. And that is probably the final step in my um, stepped approach to keeping the sensor clean. If I can't do it, 
I'll spend the 20, 30, 40 pounds, whatever it is, and just take it into an approved service um, outlet and they'll clean it while I wait normally. Um, but I haven't had to do that with either my D800, my D850 or my Z series cameras. Um, so hopefully this has been a useful video to you because it's something that in the world of mirrorless you are going to encounter. Let me know in the comments below how you go about cleaning the sensor and keeping it clean. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell next to it and you'll be notified of upcoming videos. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video.